When people cast their minds back to March of 2020, they'll most likely remember the lockdowns, the anxiety, the global toilet roll shortage. God, I don't blame them. It's pretty hard not to think about all of that stuff. But at the same time, I also think about the distraction, the joy, and the comfort that was Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, it may show you just how lucky I was in that chunk of the year to not look back now and think of loved ones lost, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you are in the same boat as me. Animal Crossing came at the perfect time, and it offered so many of us a much needed solace from the storm. Since its release, Animal Crossing New Horizons has been a global sensation. Coinciding with monumental Nintendo Switch sales, the title has managed to move somewhere over 30 million units worldwide. It very quickly went from a nostalgia-fueled sequel to a must-buy for even the most casual video game fan, with many flocking to it during the worst of times for some very necessary escapism. Now, I play a lot of games, and I examine the design of almost everything I play because I am... Just an insufferable human being. But anyway, I can safely say that the design of this game is quite unlike anything else. And you don't have to look far to see that, because everyone I know who played this loved their time with it. Naturally though, I had some questions. Questions like, why does everyone who touches this game love it so much? What does it do differently from other games in its genre to get us all so attached? How do studios that put millions of dollars into engaging narrative and world design not manage to replicate Animal Crossing's level of adoration? And Oh my god, why? Why do I have to press plus to confirm my change of clothes? I spent 10 minutes putting this outfit together, and now I have to do it all over again! For me, the main thing that Animal Crossing does differently, which sets it apart from every other game on the market, is that it plays with time. Specifically, it plays with your time. Most games, whether they're open world, roguelike, 2D platformers, or whatever else, will do one of two things with time. They'll either have an accelerated day-night cycle to give the illusion of reality without compromising on giving the player what they want pretty much immediately, or they'll have stationary times of day depending on narrative, level, or environment. Animal Crossing does things differently, because as you'll know if you've played it, its day-night cycle moves in real time. Shops open and close at typical times of day. Characters go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning. The sun goes up and down depending on your time of day, and the seasons move in tandem with the hemispheres. So, funny story, my island is a southern hemisphere one, even though I live in the northern hemisphere. And anyway, I came back to the game recently to get footage for this video, and my island's all snowy in the height of summer, which is which is really cool, right? It's all snowy, you can catch snowflakes and, and stuff like that, and it's all snowy. That, that's really cool, right? Think again! It's snowboy time! The creepiest villager you ever did see! Look at this guy! It's literally like looking at Jack Frost from the 90s movie. I wonder if I play my ocarina, Michael Keaton will come to life. <laughs> I have done some stupid bits for these videos, but that one... That one takes the cake. Besides a few accelerations like renovations and constructions completing in a day, Animal Crossing forces the player to develop a sense of patience that is otherwise unseen in this medium. Time is extraordinarily powerful in entertainment. Think about TV shows, for example. They can get us totally attached to characters because they're released over years and years of production. Between each slice, there's a waiting period where we anticipate, we discuss, we relive what we've just seen. We theorize about Marvel things that definitely won't actually come true. Episodes can hone in on one character for an hour, where most movies only have two hours total to tell an entire story. Animal Crossing uses time in this exact same way. By slowly developing your island over real days, weeks, and months, you're building up your attachment differently than you are in other games in which you progress quicker. This, in my opinion, is the central reason that people get totally hooked on Animal Crossing. It doesn't feel like playing a video game. It feels like some secondary outlet for your life that you can put realistic time and efforts into to de-stress and fantasize. Well, you know, de-stress when you're not thinking about the crippling debt you're into Tom Nook. As a part of this, you also build relationships with your villagers and other characters in the game in a similar way. 
you're getting to know these strange animals on a similar timescale to real people. And even though your interactions are limited to pre-written in-game encounters, you're still developing this sense of community and friendship that again, doesn't seem familiar to even the most in-depth character-driven games. Put this out to people when they have no other way to meet new humans in their real lives and you get a serious case of vicarious living. Using time in this way can also make players feel like they've achieved something. Every day in Animal Crossing is filled with some basic chore-like tasks. Clear weeds, talk to villagers, pick fruit, maybe water some plants, collect fossils and critters for your museum. The great thing is, these don't feel like lackluster daily tasks like in so many other continuous games that are designed to just keep you playing in the most basic way possible. These things let you harbour your affection for your island by channeling your creativity and your curiosity. I think these chores were also even more appealing because of the time of the game's release, because helping to give people a daily routine when they were first locked inside of their homes was massive. And for me, starting each day with a tour of my island quickly became the best prison routine I could ask for. When it comes to creativity, this real-time day-night cycle invites us all to take part in a marathon, not a sprint. So much of the time I get turned off by creation games and god games because I am a perfectionist who is definitely not artistically gifted. I always get frustrated when my designs aren't how I like them or I spend a few hours on something and it isn't as good as the designs I've seen online. Animal Crossing let me play the long game though, and the masterpiece that was my island was always a work in progress rather than something that had to be completed in one sitting or even at all. This is a fantastic benefit of using real time because it invited the least amount of stress and discomfort into my gameplay experience. When I came back to my island a year and a month after not playing, there were small imperfections and unfinished projects that I didn't mind seeing because it gave me more reason to play again the next day and carry on making my island just that, mine. Animal Crossing's time mechanics allow you to harness your individuality to really think about what you want your island to look like. Where do you want your house? Where do you want to plant these flowers? I guarantee that your friends' islands won't have made the same creative decisions because they've had so much time to create and change things to their own liking. It sounds like such a stupid video game marketing trope we here at Game Coping always make fun of, but no two islands are the same in Animal Crossing. The extended time you'll spend with this game by necessity lets you make calculated decisions, and that's a beautiful invitation for you to go your own way. Lastly, Animal Crossing's use of time offers the player a slow drip feed of positivity in their lives. The entire game is filled to the brim with positivity, charm, and joy offerings to whoever is playing. Every day you could talk to your villagers and they'll be nothing but happy to see you. It's a consistent supply of happiness in a world that usually tries to profit off of giving you that. Like no other modern games I can think of, it does it in a benevolent way without including microtransactions or fueling toxic player habits. In this day and age, that is an exemplary use of time in the video game space, and something I hope more developers look to. For me though, there was a disadvantage to this use of time. First of all, the daily tasks, the chores, the responsibility of being the island's star player, the crippling debt I was in to Tom Nook. It all eventually got to the point where it did nothing but remind me of the pressures and responsibilities of my own life. Facing the guilt of not returning to the island every day to make sure weeds weren't appearing was eventually getting to me. But then, something started to make it worse. And this is where I think Animal Crossing actually reaches its lowest point, so... Prepare to crucify me in the comment sections, here we go. Leave it a few days, a week, a month, or however long a break you want to take from Animal Crossing, and soon enough, your villagers will start to talk. If any of you have watched my video on Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll remember I have a bit of a problem with games guilting players into doing things. And that's because I think guilt is an extremely dangerous emotion for designers to play with, because it breeds so many others. Shame, anxiety, self-hate, responsibility, and you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not insinuating for a second that Animal Crossing is the abusive boyfriend who guilts you into staying with him, but for the types of people that this game aims to provide comfort to, the introverts, the anxious, the nostalgic, the creatives, I don't really think it's healthy to go anywhere near guilt because those are the types of people that are prone to spiraling from it. For me, I felt guilty without any of these little comments from villagers, who, like I've said, you build relationships with on a timescale that's relatable to other humans, not other video game characters. I felt bad about my creative project being left untended. I felt guilty about not donating to my museum. I felt anxious about the unpaid debt I didn't pay to Tom Nook. 
But add in my very first villagers addressing the fact I was disengaging from them? That kind of hurt. I know I said before that Animal Crossing's use of extended time mechanics was a benevolent piece of design that should be looked up to, but this makes me rethink that because I'm sure I probably wasn't the only one who felt this. I'm flip-flopping here, because the truth is I don't actually know how to feel about this game's time mechanics. Animal Crossing gives us such an interesting look into how time can be used in game design. The main question still in my mind is if this powerful extension of time was put in any other game that doesn't have Animal Crossing's innocence and charm, what would the intended effect be? Could we really trust an EA or even a Take Two with this level of attachment? We all owe so much to this cute little game and the joy it gave so many of us during the pandemic. But now that we're really starting to come out the other side, I'm curious to see how, if at all, Animal Crossing's time design will play out in the larger games industry. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like and hit the subscription and bell buttons to get notified whenever we upload next. There's a new episode of Pod Coping that's just come out, so be sure to give that a listen if you want to catch up on the month's biggest video game news. And finally, please take a look in the description to find links to our social media and links to the 8-Bit Big Band, whose song featured at the start of this video. They do jazz covers of so many great bits of video game music, and their work is just astounding. Please do go and give them a listen. That'll be all from me just now. Be sure to stay safe and tune in next time.